A couple of weeks ago, in a moment of feeling a lot of fear around um, scarcity and wondering what would happen in the global pandemic, I'm a small business, my business is all related to art and jewelry and you know, if your survival mind kicks in, jewelry is not the first thing that you're thinking about. So I've had moments where I've been very worried about my business and how am I gonna support my family and things like that. So in one of those dark moments last week, um, when my thoughts had taken over and I was just worried about, I'd kind of forgotten about the possibility. I'd forgotten about the possibility of abundance and the, and actually the likelihood of abundance if I looked back on my life and really kind of assessed how things have been. There's just been so much abundance just in general in life for all of us. But we focus on, or I sometimes get caught up focusing on the wrong things. And I do believe that money and numbers and business, I'm in my heart, I believe that that's the wrong thing to focus on. And I've never run my business that way. It's always been through my gut. Is this a yes or a no? And that's how I make decisions. So anyway, I was in a moment of sort of darkness and worrying and um, really kind of despairing last week or the week before. And it bubbled up for me to try an experiment. What if I allowed for the possibility of abundance. And actually not only that, what if I expected abundance? And what if I allowed it to show up for me in a way that maybe I wasn't looking for in that moment? So, it, or in ways that I've looked for it in the past. And what if I allowed things to kind of come in from the corners of my eyes and get my attention? And what if, what would happen if I did that? And I have just been, I mean, dumbstruck with the amount of things that have come in. I mean, it's spring, so there's there's just so much happening right now. I went for a walk around that time with my son and we gathered dandelions on a little bike ride through our neighborhood. He was biking and I was walking. We came home and we made a dandelion infusion, which we're now gonna make into a salve. And just the, the, the time with him was beautiful and a gift and the dandelions were everywhere. They were, it was wonderful to see. Just now while I was looking for them, they were everywhere. And then the day before yesterday, out of the blue, um, a, f a friend of my husband's just asked if I wanted some cedar bark. Yeah, I want some cedar bark. I would love to get my hands on some cedar bark. I've never really understood how to source that material respectfully, although it, it sings to my heart. It's just not mine to harvest. And so that coming as a gift was nothing short of a miracle and um, and then last night out with the dog and the kids for a walk uh, with, with um, through the forest and we stumbled upon a wild rose bush and I had been wanting to make wild rose and strawberry jam and the it was the roses that stopped me finally and I just kind of looked I looked at all of these experiences and thought look at this abundance it's everywhere it's not what I was looking for but when I pause and I really look at what's going on in life, there's nothing to be worried about. Every need is met. Every need and more is met abundantly with life. And we just have to know how to look for it. And for me, that's a practice. So I invite you to do that practice with me because you're not immune to that abundance either, no matter how much part of your mind wants to tell you to, that you don't, that you're not gonna get it or that you're somehow outside of that system. You're not. You are abundantly provided for as well. And let's go on an adventure and, and decide to look for that abundance and allow it to show up for us in ways that surprise us. <sighs> okay. So I'm going to do the daily offering. Another abundant, a basket abundantly filled to the almost brim. It's actually kind of halfway filled now. i got to refill it. It's a Nautilus. This is a sterling silver nautilus with no patina, no oxidization. So that means it's nice and shiny. What I love about nautilus are that as they grow, they seal off the chamber in the shell that was behind them and they actually can't go back into it. It helps and that, that actually that, that sealed off space becomes really useful for them for buoyancy as they travel to different, different depths in the ocean. But I also love the symbology of, you know, once you've 
once you've kind of gone through a certain chapter in your life, it's okay to close it and move on. Use the wisdom from it to help you with your own buoyancy, but, but not necessarily going back and inhabiting old spaces that don't fit you anymore. So if that's resonating for you today, Nautilus medicine is amazing. So um, I'll do a little reading for you from the Nautilus as well. The Journeyer. The beautiful, mysterious, and clever Nautilus has been around for 500 million years. This nocturnal creature depends most of its life, spends most of its life in the deepest, inky black depths of the sea. As Nautiluses grow, they create new chambers in their beautiful mother-of-pearl lined shells, sealing off the previous ones as they are no longer needed, reminding us to grow ever forward in our own evolution. Nautilus symbolize harmonic, proportionate growth that maximizes an organism's efficiency for thriving in its surroundings. So also for that, I mean, what's coming up for me that I just wanted to share with you today is growth doesn't need to be explosive and obvious and in your face. It can be harmonious and proportionate to the situation that you're in. You know, if you're going through a huge big time, allow it to be proportionate to what you're going through because you need your resources sort of balanced throughout your whole system. So that's the story card. The story cards are available for sale on the website now. They're, they should be on the front page. And um, what else can I tell you? That's it, that's all I wanna tell you. I love you, you're doing this. <laughs>